In this course, there are um, several condensation reactions. And condensation reaction is basically any reaction in which two molecules come together, make a bond, and as a result of bond formation, a small molecule like water uh, or acetic acid, for example, a small molecule comes out. Okay, so uh, in this uh, particular uh, uh, condensation reaction, we will be uh, synthesizing an analgesic, a uh, very common analgesic. When you have a headache, you use aspirin. You know. So aspirin, you will be actually synthesizing today uh, a, by a very simple reaction by <coughs> reacting uh, salicylic acid with acetic and hydride in the presence of very strong acid, sulfuric acid. Uh, other catalyst, and we'll be just basically stirring it together, a mixture of all the three ingredients here, uh, for a certain amount of time, and after that, you will be uh, isolating the aspirate uh, product and finding out the uh, uh, percentage yield uh, after the, uh, the limiting reagent. So, um, in this uh, reaction, uh, uh, we have a nucleophile, which is the hydroxyl group of this uh, phenol, the phenolic OH is a nucleophile, and these two carbon atoms, they are the electrophilic centers, so the reaction occurs between this oxygen and either this carbon or that carbon. And so you have an ester group introduced, so this is a new bond formed between uh, this part and uh, OH. So uh, this is, a, that's why it's called a stereification reaction, because this has an ester group. This is a carboxyl group. This is a this is an anhydride group. Anhydride is any compound in which you have oxygen uh, between uh, surrounded by two carbonyl groups. Okay, uh, uh, acetic anhydrides and other anhydrides they are very strong electrophiles. So nucleophile, electrophile, and we have acidification. It's a simple reaction, uh, and we can from about sulfuric acid. Uh, by the way, I will be actually uh, uploading uh, the PowerPoint and in that PowerPoint I have uh, discussed uh, the mechanism of this reaction as well, as well as uh, the, uh, the advantages and disadvantages of uh, using aspirin. Okay, so let's head uh, to the lab. So let me uh, introduce to you uh, the chemicals that we'll be using, the reactants. This is salicylic acid, a natural product that will be used as a nucleophile and I have weighed 2 grams of uh, this powder. And uh, this one is the electrophile, acetic anhydride. I have measured 5 milliliters of uh, acetic anhydride. And this is uh, just uh, an Erlenmeyer flask with a stir bar. And this is a wide mouth funnel. It's, it is used for adding powders. I'm adding 2 grams of uh, salicylic acid in the Erlenmeyer flask. And then I'm going to add uh, portion wise acetic anhydride. It doesn't have to be very slow. You have to swirl it. Add small portion of it. Swirl the uh, around my flask. Swirling is circular motion. It's not shaking. The addition has to be portion wise, but uh, not. It doesn't have to be very slow. So once you have uh, finished adding it, now you have to add the catalyst, sulfuric acid. Be careful about sulfuric acid. Always wear gloves. You add five drops of it. Sulfuric acid is highly corrosive and it's a very dangerous chemical. You need to be very aware of that. Make sure that you <coughs> read the label. Okay, if it's sulfuric acid concentrated especially be careful about it while adding it. Don't spill it on your hands. You swirl it uh, for about maybe 15-20 seconds 
and then you start heating it at about 68 degrees I have already actually I am using water uh, as a thermostat uh, I am heating water and I keep it at 68 degrees and I will just basically heat it at 68 degrees for about 20 minutes and then I will assume that the action is done okay so I have uh, been heating it for about 20 minutes and uh, now I have removed uh, the hot solution and put the flask in ordinary room temperature water and that's uh, a very good way of uh, cooling your solutions quickly you can use uh, water in a beaker and uh, you can actually change water if you want to but so after uh, maybe a few minutes the flask is atta has attained the, the room temperature after that some people will, might be getting some precipitate here but most of you may not be getting any precipitate at all at this point because uh, uh, because the precipitation sometimes is difficult so what you can do is you can induce crystallization by a very simple technique you just put a glass rod in there and start scratching the sides and the bottom of the Erlenmeyer flask and as you can see the whiteness uh, is appearing now uh, it's, the solution is becoming more milky it's because uh, the aspirin which is white is precipitating and uh, so then you basically uh, once you get a significant amount of precipitate you add chilled water to it and chilled water will reduce the solubility of uh, uh, not add but first you cool it down to uh, lower than room temperature to get a little bit more precipitate later on you'll be adding actually uh, some chilled water to it so right now I'm using chilled water only to cool it further to get more precipitate and this is uh, the pre-cooled again chilled water that I'm going to add to the flask and remember aspirin is not soluble in water is certainly not soluble soluble in water in chilled water okay uh, and so add it and swirl it and again cool it uh, uh, in chilled water okay so the purpose of cooling uh, is to reduce the solubility further you can keep it in ice for about two minutes don't prolong it too much because what happens is if you prolong it too much then water starts hydrolyzing the product as well I'm uh, back in the lab we are now ready to do the vacuum filtration the vacuum filtration consists of using a Buchner funnel with a filter disk in there and wetting the filter disk with water so that it covers the holes really well and that glues the filter paper and covers the holes this is the donut adapter rubber adapter vacuum adapter and you put the um, Buchner filler on top of that and then you attach the holes now make sure I didn't do that that was a mistake you should actually fix the uh, filtration flask using a lap stand and a metal clamp metal clamp fixing makes sure that it you don't have any accident otherwise the torque created by the hose can tilt the flask okay so it's a good idea all right so I should have done that uh, that was a mistake you should do that so break the lumps of your product as and uh, make sure it's nice and cold and it's like a fine suspension now you're going to add it to the Buchner funnel and you press the Buchner funnel with your press it down by pressing down you make sure that the vacuum is effectively applied and again you swirl it and keep adding portion wise till you complete uh, the vacuum filtration
now we have uh, completed the vacuum filtration however there is some stuff sticking to the flask we want to get that as well as much as possible you can use uh, again a little bit some water and use a glass rod or something like that to make sure that the you can get as much of the white stuff out uh, onto the Buchner funnel and again you press it press it for a uh, for uh, some time and then leave it there for about 10 minutes because your stuff is still wet and make sure that uh, you completely dry it so our filtration is now complete and now we want to uh, we ha it's been there for about 10 minutes now we want to disengage it remove the product first you remove the magnet bar with the uh, with the magnet bar retriever uh, this is a rod that has a magnet on it so you remove that now you have your product aspirin plus the filter paper you transfer with the filter paper you transfer it on the watch glass so use a spatula to disengage the filter paper along with the product and transfer as much as possible uh, this uh, white product uh, your aspirin uh, onto the watch glass make sure both filter paper and the product are there because filter paper is a part of the uh, pre-weighing pre -weighing process filter paper was uh, there when we pre-weighed watch glass so watch glass and filter paper together now transfer as much as uh, as much product as possible okay the product looks wet how can I tell because it looks like a sticky a little bit sticky that means that the product is still wet even though it was there for more than 10 minutes actually okay so let's go and wait and find out the mass of uh, the wash glass and filter paper and the product is going to be 53.56 all right let's go to the whiteboard and do some calculations 53.56 if you subtract the upper number from the lower number you'll be getting the product the mass of the product 4.00 gram that's very unrealistic that's way higher than 100% because remember you used only two grams of salicylic acid and uh, what does that mean it means that it has a lot of moisture in there I mean that's the only explanation that I can come up with now if you heat it with uh, if you I mean if you put it in the oven uh, it has moisture so moisture will hydrolyze your product back into salicylic acid so it's not a good idea to dry it in the oven this is a simple way of doing it use a paper towel paper towel uh, is just like uh, drying you know uh, your face or your hands or something the paper towel right the same thing basically so you uh, keep transferring it to the into the to the uh, drying parts of the filter paper and keep pressing with your with your uh, thumbs remember you need to wear gloves okay even aspirin is not toxic now after drying completely with, with paper towel it's 51.73 gram and if you subtract the lower number from the upper number it's going to be 2.17 gram so here is it so 2.17 gram is the uh, product it may have still still some moisture in there but not much so based on that you can actually calculate the yield make sure you have you use uh, two dimensional equations one corresponding to the salicylic acid and the other corresponding to acetic and hydride now this is uh, what what happens actually uh, now we, we want to make sure that the uh, what's the purity of this product so if it is uh, if the OH is free OH 
uh, it will give you a blue coloration with follicle right. Now your product aspirin doesn't have a free OH. It has been taken by acetyl group. So your product should not give any blue coloration with uh, uh, ferricol right. However, salicylic acid will give because salicylic acid has OH group. Okay, so we can do a very simple test. You know, instead of going to the you know uh, NMR and uh, TLC and those sophisticated techniques, we can use three tubes. Tube A is just blank; it has nothing in there, just one mill of water. And tube B and C both have one mill of water. Okay. Now tube B will have salicylic acid and uh, tube C will have, uh, this is ferricol right, tube B will have salicylic acid, tube C will have our product. Now tube A doesn't have anything so no color, of course no color because there's nothing in there, it's just blank tube. B does have or should have uh, salicylic acid. Now remember salicylic acid does have an OH group. So I have put a little bit of it, you don't need just a little bit basically. Just add it and when now it's a suspension of salicylic acid. Now add one or two drops of ferrochloride solution to test whether it has OH group or not. Of course it does. It should give you deep color deep violet or purple or blue color right here okay violet color well it was expected because remember salicylic acid salicylic acid has a free OH group phenolic group now your product we need a little bit of that uh, you can scrape off from the um, book no funnel uh, the book no funnel might have a little bit of it so you can scrape off a little bit and transfer it into, into the uh, tube C. Now tube C will have just water and your product. Remember your product does not have any free phenolic group so it should not give you any color with ferricol right. Let's see. Okay add a couple of drops of ferricol right and shake it Wow, there's, well, there's no color. That means all the hydroxyl groups of the phenol were taken. There is no phenolic group, uh, phenolic hydroxyl group free. So our experiment was very good. It was successful. All right, now what happens if you keep it at room, uh, in water for some maybe half an hour or so? It will start developing color. You know why? Because remember, hyd water hydrolyzes your product and it hydrolyzes into f back into salicylic acid. So remember, salicylic acid does have a free OH group. Now, in order to further, you know, if you had uh, a little bit of color, you would have to crystallize it. Uh, the, for crystallization, you know, the best solvent is the one in which your compound is not soluble in cold but in soluble in hot state. Okay, so I have I dissolved it in or dissolved the aspirin, crude aspirin, in hot ethyl acetate. Remember, in hot ethyl acetate, it should be soluble, but when you cool it down, it should precipitate out because aspirin is not soluble in cold ethyl acetate, but it is in hot ethyl acetate. So you can see very nicely there's the crystals, and if you cool them down in ice water more and more crystals will come out and the yield will improve. So we need to actually cool it down in uh, first at room temperature and then in ice water mixture for about 10 minutes. You can occasionally swirl it as well. Swirl it and you know uh, swirl it and you don't have to be there. Just leave it there for about 5-10 minutes and then swirl it again and then you should see, see the you can see more crystals are coming out. The longer you keep it in ice, the better yield you should be able to get. Okay, so we have 
cooled it quite a bit now we are ready to do the filtration the filtration technique is the same as we did last time and again we weighed the fil filter disk with the uh, with the uh, watch glass and now we are wetting it with ethyl acetate not with water with ethyl acetate because uh, the suspension is in ethyl acetate not in water okay so the book nerve flow should be fixed onto the uh, donut adapter uh, and start the vacuum on uh, again it was uh, uh, very important for us especially for me to actually hook it, uh, to fix the uh, filtration flask with the iron stand using a metal clamp but please make sure that you do okay um, all right so basically you are going to filter it just exactly the same way that you did before okay especially now that the rinse should be cold ethyl acetate not water previously it was water now cold ethyl acetate so you rinse it and that's it you keep it there for five to ten minutes and then you are ready to calculate the yield the yield should be based on uh, it's depending upon your instructor if your instructor wants it the uh, wants the crude uh, percentage yield of the crude then report it that way or of the crystallized stuff then you can report the crude uh, the yield of the crystallized product as well bye